The World Without Visas Around the World with Valery Shannon Israel The Shvil Israel Trail The campaign on the National Trail of Israel became the next stage of the World Without Visas project in which Valery Shannon travels only around the countries that are visa-free for Russians. Second Series The trail goes south through a eucalyptus grove on the east coast of Tiberias Lake. From above, it is entirely visible. The lake is not really big. However, it is the largest freshwater reservoir of Israel. The water from the lake is used both for drinking and for irrigation. A complex system of pipes and tubes brings water to the roots of each tree. Yardenit, the place where the Jordan River leaves Tiberias Lake. There is a symbolical office of baptism for Catholics and believers of the Greek Orthodox Church. The place of Jesus Christ's baptism is mentioned in the Gospel as Vifavara. Scientists believe that it is near Castle El Yakud, four kilometers from where the Jordan River confluence with the Dead Sea, at the border area between Israel and Jordan. Access is complicated there. Therefore, since 1981, the Office of Baptism passes in Yardenita, the place of baptism is enclosed with a fence and protected. But only 100 meters away, it is possible to put tent and spend the night directly ashore. There is a wish to wait longer. It seems nature insists on it. She gives us a reason to postpone our departure a little. The trail goes on the gorge Nakal Yavnel, towards Nazareth. How was your hiking? On the rise, Ezra and Jordan catch up. They also travel on the Shvil Israel trail and cross paths more than once with Valeri Shannon. And the tent, and the tent is now full of water because of the rain. <laughs> yes. We used the tent to cover ourselves. That's a good idea. The last view of Tiberias Lake. Now the passage to the Tavor Mountain the place of transformation of Jesus Christ is already visible ahead. In the settlement of Kfar Kish, there is a place for a camping. The most remarkable thing here, a view of the Tavar mountain. The mountain is 588 meters high, standing in the middle of the Jezreel Valley, is repeatedly mentioned in the Bible. At the time of the Old Testament, it stood at the border between Zebulun in the west, Issachar in the southeast, 
and Nephalima in the north. The Tavor Mountain appears in the New Testament as the place of the Lord's transformation. In the 4th century, the first church was constructed at the place where the event was described. It collapsed repeatedly and was restored. The present building was last restored in the 1920s. The trail climbs down a mountain to the settlement of Shibli. Directly behind it, the long rise on the mountain Debora, covered in pine wood, begins. In the spring, irises blossom here. And in the fall, you can collect olives. The trail passes across the suburb of the town of Nazareth and enters the wood reserve of Zipori. Here, history has left obvious marks. Still ancient olive trees fructify. Everywhere stones are covered with traces of polishing. We cross the highway number 77. We pass through an eucalyptus grove. Then a pinery. Wow. And again nice we meet with the old again. acquaintance. Nice the first supermarket we found after several days of traveling was in an Arab village. The owner of the shop hospitably meets pedestrians, just as it is done by all people encountered on the path, nice. both Israelis and Arabs. It's a pilgrimage, uh, pilgrimage uh, trip or something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, very nice. You're welcome. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah, yeah. You thank you. There is water in the Ein Ifka source. It is crude, it isn't necessary to drink it. There is no firewood to build fires here. So it is important that anyone who goes on the Shvil Israel trail with a backpack brings a gas torch. By means of simple technology, water begins to boil quicker. Jordan explains the reason why there are so many vacationers. There was recently a holiday, Sukkot, after this holiday, for the whole week, people have a rest and travel around the country. This majestic building is called Takinat Enezirim, or the monastic mill. At the time of the Ottoman Empire, flour was produced here. Jordan tells, 20 years ago, nuclear waste was dumped in this river. The trail passes through the settlement of Isfia on the suburb of Haifa. There is a bus that leads downtown 
Haifa is not a historical city. The only sight to see is the gardens of Bakai, but the entrance is closed. It is better to return back on the trail. In December 2010, a fire has destroyed most of the woods on the reserve of Mountain Carmel. They are gradually restored, but so far the landscape is modest, looking like a place victim of barbarous logging. The trail conducts to the narrow gorge of Nakal Hik. Here the trees have almost not suffered. But as soon as the trail brings us to open slopes, disaster scales become obvious. There is no live trees left. Even four years after the fire. And just the same picture repeats farther. The ravines and open slopes, which once have grown with wood, are now naked. Near Carmel Mountain, people have lived from time immemorial. Ruins of houses and churches have remained. There are caves here that were once inhabited a very long time ago. And slightly farther, we can see only the stony hills which have overgrown rare trees. Like in many other places of Israel, efforts of locals on restoration of the woods are visible. Both individuals and large corporations donate money for this good cause. Along the coast, a continuous banana plantation stretches. The trail leaves the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and turns to the south towards Tel Aviv. A little more farther, on the Offer Hill, a tower had been built. Only from the observation deck can a real view be taken in the vicinity. On the trail, monuments after monuments can be seen. For example, a revered memorial to the Israel military pilot Motia Sharon, who died on December 29, 1988, at the age of 25. There are also big memorial complexes. The inscriptions are mostly written in Hebrew only. Through a narrow gorge, the trail enters a dense pine wood. The earth here is stony and infertile, but people somehow still manage to practice agriculture. Both breeding cows and growing olive trees are practiced. On the suburb of the settlement of Zikron Yaakov, in the territory of the botanical garden Ganel Anadiv, archaeological excavations are well underway. A roof has been closed over the ruins for protection against the rain. During the first century of our era, in Ein Zur, Romans have improved an ancient source. They have cut through the 50-meter tunnel and constructed an aqueduct for water transportation. Since then, already 2,000 years have passed, but the source hasn't decayed, and its water is as pure as before. It can be drunk safely and without boiling. On a hot day, of course, it is necessary to drink and to bathe. On a trail, it is a rare opportunity. Bathing like this is very different than in a bathtub, of course. People already lived on the Hirbat Akav farm at the time of Herod the Great, and later, during the Byzantine era. Since then, ruins of several buildings and a huge mill wheel have remained. But the most important here is a beautiful view of the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. To get to the coast, it is necessary to go down and cross the railroad. From the source at Nakal Ataninim, the water using the Roman aqueduct went to the city of Caesarea, located ashore Palestine.
Exactly here, in the capital of Judea, was the palace of Herod the Great and the residence of the Roman procurator Pontius Pilate. In early centuries, this local Christian community was one of the biggest and the most influential in all Middle East. In the 7th century, the city was occupied by Arabs. In 1191, Crusaders came here. They have held on up to 1265. Of those heroic times, the fortification of the city, the ruins of temples and churches have remained. Beyond Caesarea, the trail goes along the seashore. Further, up in Tel Aviv, she will go along the water's edge. The trek came to the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. To go on the beach is 10 kilometers, or it is more. We cross the Netanya Resort and again we come back to the beach. Fresh evening breeze. Warm, but not hot. In the evening, there is no body on the bank but it is strictly forbidden to be put tents up here. The sand is rather dense, especially at the water's edge. It is easy and pleasant to go. The antique city Apollonia, also known as Arsuf, was destroyed in 1265 by the army of the Sultan Baybars and wasn't restored since then. Fortifications and pieces of walls fall off, then fall from the high coast down, directly on the head of the people passing across the beach. It is dangerous to go there, but the passage isn't closed. The authorities decided to just place warning plates along the coast. If an accident happens, then nobody can expostulate. You were warned. The distant suburbs of Tel Aviv begin. There is much more people on the beach. Morning physical exercise. Nobody has to be forced to bathe. The water is rather cool. And there was also a small storm. Only surfers hurry to get an opportunity to ride the waves. The Shvil Israel Trail goes into Tel Aviv from the north side around a combined heat and power plant and an old light tower. Downtown, the land is very expensive. But the city authorities, nevertheless, didn't begin to sell the sites leading to the Yarkon River. On the lands belonging to municipality has broken a park. Peace of wildlife among skyscrapers and highways. The trail goes east through reed thickets on the northern bank of the Yarkon River. The fort of Pillbox has been constructed in 1935 for the protection of the railway bridge against attacks. It has no military value anymore and is now a historical site only, as well as the bridge. The national park begins directly opposite of the bridge. In this territory, where the source proceeds through the 
Tel Avia and Yarkon rivers. There is harvesting in the gardens. The persimmon has just ripened and an abundance of flowers are blooming, just like at the very beginning of spring. Irbat Mazor is the only Roman mausoleum which has remained up to now. According to a legend, John the Baptist spent time with to do some reflection. For Christians and Muslims, this mausoleum is not only a historical site. The trail crosses the industrial zone of Shokam. In the Ben Sheman woods, hundreds of olive trees have remained. Some of them are more than 100 years old. The memorial waved is devoted to the memory of internationalists who in 1948 have taken part in the war for independence. Then, 3,000 people arrived to Israel from 29 different countries. From this monument, the Mountain Judea Reserve begins. It is the national park of Mountain Judea. It is still early in the morning and it's already hot, especially going up. A casual meeting on the trail. Ravit, a worker in a kindergarten of a small kibbutz in the north of Israel. Like most of Israelis, he walks on the trail in parts only, not all at once. The purpose of the trip this time? To reach the suburbs of Jerusalem in two days. Almost all the territory of the Mountain Judea National Park is occupied by the mountains which are covered with pines. The memorial cave is devoted Bnai Brit, the Jewish organization created in the USA in the 20th century. Before the entrance to a cave, a monument is established in memory of the victims of the Holocaust. And on the neighboring mountains, six million trees have been planted, one for each of the victims. The In Lehman source is a little higher, on a slope, Water filters from a cave and accumulates in the pool with the cemented walls. The stone house stood nearby, but only the base and the lower part of the walls remain. The northern suburb of Jerusalem, the settlement of Ein Kerim, this place is mentioned in the New Testament. In the Gospel from Luke, there are such lines. And she entered into the house of Zachary and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. In commemoration of this event, Franciscans have constructed the church of visit where Zachary's house once stood. And nearby, there is also the source of Saint Virgin Mary. We do a small transition through a site of burned down wood and we enter Jerusalem. We pass by the monastery of the Sacred Cross and we leave to the old city around Jaffa Gate, near David's fortress. Old Jerusalem is divided among Jewish, Armenian, Christian and Muslim. The most sacred places for all Jews, the western wall of the temple, or as it is often called, the Wailing Wall. They come here to pray, leave notes with the appeals turned to God in the cracks between the stones of the wall. And of course, take a selfie for memory. Presently, all holy sites also became tourist sites. Above the western wall stands the Golden Dome Mosque of Al-Aqsa, already neighboring the Muslim quarter. The entrance there is closed to Jews. 
Christians are usually led by freely. But because of the aggravation of the situation in East Jerusalem, the entrance is closed for all, except devout Muslims. Christian pilgrims come to Jerusalem from all around the world. On the streets, there is an infinite religious procession. Each Christian considers it a duty to pass on Via Dolorosa, on the same way Jesus Christ was conducted to Golgotha. We leave the old city through Damask Gate. The Jerusalem Trail goes through East Jerusalem from the gardens of Gethsemane to the university. Behind it, the Judaic desert begins. The unexpected rain doesn't give the chance to continue the excursion across East Jerusalem. It is time to come back to the Shvil Israel Trail. <laughs> 